I identified five common mistakes that always lead to scholarship application rejection. So, as you prepare for scholarship application in 2023, this is already summer, so application season is fast approaching. So, as you prepare for scholarship for your scholarship application, here are five common mistakes that you should definitely avoid. I also somehow profile possible solutions to these problems, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chris. You're welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are a visiting viewer, you are highly welcome. Please um buckle on your shoes and tighten your bed here yeah, in for a ride please and you see that like button please click the like button and try to subscribe to my youtube channel i bet you, you will not regret tuning in anyways for you for those who don't already know me i'm a graduate student at the simon fraser university and i am on a fully funded scholarship so in this youtube channel i talk about fully funded scholarships and in particular for this episode i am talking about those mistakes that often lead to scholarship rejection you know you get this rejection emails oh we are sorry to announce that you have been rejected for this scholarship <laughs> it is painful so as we prepare right this is these are some of the things that um, you should avoid by way of proceeding my this episode is divided into five sections i five sections i highlighting the common mistakes that I have identified. Don't forget this list is not um, absolute, it's not exhaustive. There are other reasons that your application might be rejected, but these five reasons are important and they are always um, predominant. They are always the predominant reasons for why application is rejected. Remember, I am not uh, in admission committee, I am just um, offering my opinion from my long years of experience and research into this scholarship thing so i do hope you find it useful what is the first reason i have five reasons lack of preparation one e-crafted essays poor letters of recommendations poor grades and then unfit for that for a part for a particular program so these are my five reasons and i'm going to talk about them in detail right so let's start with one lack of preparation oftentimes i get people people think applying for scholarship scholarship is just something you wake up and then you decide to apply for it of course you see the link but no that is not how it works to be awarded a scholarship is not something that you is not merely by luck it's not just luck right it's not just try and trial and luck no it's something that you prepare for it's something you spend a huge amount of your time trying to do so the first thing you should do for yourself is to start in time start in time so if you start in time the whole component of your scholarship application would be reviewed by some other people who know these things more than you do right so if say you're applying so for those who would be applying for 2023 it's already may and application season starts by september first week of september right so this is the time to start this is time to start preparing your um your essays start crafting your essays start reaching out to your professors who would write your recommendation letters and start drafting looking by now you should already have schools possible schools that you would be applying for thankfully for those who want to apply for philosophy english re religious studies i've already made some videos as to school recommendations that offer fully funded scholarship so you will check in the in the description section for links to these videos feel free to relax i've already done that work of searching for schools for you this is time for you to now start be preparing for other part of your application other component of your application things like your writing sample and your statement of purpose this is time because you need to 
if you have gotten the list of your schools and have readied your document, you can now know how to channel your application fee request. If you prepare in time, you are able to apply to as many schools as possible because you would have enough time to apply for um, application fee waiver. If you don't make your if you don't arrange your bed in time, if you don't make preparations in time, then you are left with few options as to you know time of your application. But if you start in time, you're able to arrange things. First thing, you're able to know which school would give you application fee waiver because you would have written to them beforehand requesting the possibility or asking the possibility of application fee waiver. In fact, part of the things you should do while you prepare is to identify potential schools you want to apply to and reach out to them far before application season opens, you know, even requesting you. Does your school offer application fee waiver? Is there any possibility of getting application fee waiver? So starting time the second common mistakes common mistake you should avoid is ill-crafted essays remember i've said a couple of times in my videos that the most important element of your application is your writing sample because that is how you show your um your evaluators or the admission officers that you are capable of doing research at a graduate level if you don't do not have a good writing sample then your application is is as good as nothing it shows that no matter how beautiful your grade you graduated with first class and yet you are not able to come up with a good writing sample then that is all so like i said if you start in time you're able to give so many reviewers your essay you know to help you to review and when you are considering writing sample try to there's one thing they don't they are not looking for originality yes try as much as possible to be as original as possible but they do know that you are coming from undergraduate education and you know, you've not read, read yet reached that level so they can understand if you do not have original ideas but whatever it is that you are writing on show that you are capable you understand the subject matter or the object matter of your discussion to show that you have a mastery of the literature so show that you have consulted so many articles and so many papers you know just show your show that you know what is going on in what you are writing don't sound ill informed secondly in your writing sample you have to show logical coherence you, have, you don't say a you know you, you don't start from the onset to argue for one point and then you ended up saying something different now how do you know if your there is logical coherence and you know there is mastery of you show you showed mastery of your writing sample when you finish your writing your writing sample take it to your professors your undergraduate professors to help you to look at or take it to somebody you know Sometimes even students in the school that you are applying to, they can help you review your essays. Please do not send your undergraduate thesis as it is and send as writing sample. Even if you are going to use your undergraduate thesis, you, you have to update that your undergraduate thesis. Remove some things that are irrelevant and try to, you know, rework your undergraduate writing, um, your thesis. Then for SOP tips, I've already made a robust video on how to go about writing SOP. You'd also find it in the description section below. So just see that video, you'll see everything you need to know about an SOP. In any case, your essays, you have to show if these two of your essays are fraught with even some things as mechanical errors like you know grammatical errors and the rest. That speaks very low of you so you have to prepare this essay in time like this is the time for you to start working on your writing sample this is the time so spend May June and even July writing and rewriting because sometimes when you finish when you finish the first draft and send out they have to make a robust review sometimes it requires you to even change topic or even to um, to you know 
change the fundamental basis of that essay so start in time so that many people could review your document as much as possible or as much as needed so the third common mistake that could lead that always lead to scholarship rejection is poor letters of recommendation letters of recommendation remember is the second most important aspect of your scholarship application for those in the humanities especially and what could possibly lead to rejection or what could make your letter of recommendation unsatisfying one is if it lacks if it is shallow and lacks substance for example you know i've seen some 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 scholarship recommendation letters that are just so few like the professor is being economical with words no so that letter of recommendation is not satisfying it's not good enough so what are those things that you know this to whom it may concern kind of letter that sometimes professors write especially professors who are not used to writing recommendation letters does not help the student at all they need to show that they need to speak more of you they, should, they need to speak on your behalf because that is what letter of recommendation is for so what are solutions to curbing this letter of recommendation problem one the recommender should show that they know the student in the letter secondly they should highlight the student's achievements you know for example if the lecturer taught you he should say what percentage you are in class especially if you are one of his best students you should say yes yeah, this is my one of my best students he's in top one percent in my class then thirdly the professor should be able to give his opinion as to whether you are fit for that program and give reasons so the professor is supposed to know about the department that you are applying to or the school that you are applying to and say okay i think chris Ognus or so so and so person can fit into your program because of so so and so thing, things he has done in the past right and then to help your letter of recommendation this is something that i, I cannot overemphasize you don't just inform your professor to write letter of recommendation for for you especially professors maybe for those that have left school for more than two years now maybe you don't even have a good relationship with your professor especially for those of us in nigeria universities where there are many students in the class so this professor might not even remember you so what do you do as you are informing your professor to give you letter of recommendation to write letter of recommendation for you make sure you give them your cv or something like something they call brack sheet brack sheet is a document that contains all your achievement that you want the professor to 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 write on your cv maybe remind the professor that you you graduated the top of his class or you are you are one of the few students in his class who got an a just highlight everything your academic achievements your personal qualities and things like that on your brack sheet or give the professor your academic cv another thing you could give the professor is give the professor a sample of a recommendation letter that the the schools requ abroad require so you can always find different good samples of letters of recommendation online and so yes that is that the fourth common mistake is poor poor grades right you graduated with a 2-2 or 2-1 so yeah poor grades having poor grades can be a huge mistake for applying for scholarship but sometimes people think it's only people who have first class that can get scholarship that can win scholarship it's not true maybe you had family issues that effect of which affected your own performance in school right so it is understandable sometimes application material have this portion, application documents have this portion where they say where they ask you to highlight maybe any experiences you have during your undergraduate education that might have affected your performance i did write that although i graduated first class but i see had some issues while i was studying that affected my performance i i said it in the on the on that particular portion where well, if if the particular school you are applying for does not have that provision having two two or two one is not the end there are other ways to leverage on your 
on your chances of winning the scholarship. Here are things you should do. If you don't have good grades, then you have to leverage on other extracurricular experiences. You have to try and attend conferences. You have to try for now. In fact, this summer, there are different academic conferences going on in your field. Try to attend any one of them, not just attending, not just attending, but you have to deliver a paper in this conference. So it could be a research that you have been working on. You have to go to these conferences and deliver papers on, you know, you have to try as much as possible to publish, you know, try to publish and in fact sometimes conferences that you might have attended in the past might have might select your paper for publication so they will just do that for you so you use one stone to kill two birds right and then try to have research internships try to reach out to your professors who are working on different projects ask them that show interest in their work and ask them to be their research assistant assistants right volunteer and be and be involved in your community especially in your field i don't know maybe yes be part of maybe your department is organizing a conference reach out to whoever the organizing committee is and ask them that you want to be part of this you know how you can help that you want to volunteer and maybe the the uh, association your programs association for example philosophers association of nigeria organizing conference reach out to the professor or Jim Una or something, the head of that association, reach out to them. Tell them, please, can I be involved in this? Um, I am a aspiring scholar, I am aspire, aspiring graduate student or whatever, that you want to really be involved. So leverage on these other, other opportunities. Having poor grade, having two tools does not make you unfit to win scholarship. What makes you unfit to win scholarship is no effort at all not putting any effort the fifth common mistake that i've identified that leads to rejection scholarship rejection is unfit your unfitness is it there anything like that you are not fit for that particular program you are applying for and what are those reasons that could what are those reasons that could make you unfit for that particular program for example, your area of research interest does not align with any professor in that department. So you said that you, know, you want to work in molecular biology and there is no professor in that department that works on molecular biology. So that's already a red flag. So that is why you have to do your due diligence. Know what and what the professors um, in that department are working on. Biology, physics, philosophy, these are broad areas um, disciplines these are they have different areas in that field so the fact that you had your undergraduate degree in philosophy does not make it the case that you can literally walk into any department and study maybe your area of research interest no one in that department is working on it so try to be mindful of that make your do your due diligence check what the department what people in that department are working on the secondly what can make you unfit for a program is control your control maybe your views let me this is very important your views about some particular issues might single you out let me give you an example of what i mean you are coming from an african country right where things like um gender issues sexuality is there is this conservative note note on some of these issues like homosexuality or the role of women in the society you know you're coming for yes in your society this is what they some of the things that how the opinion they hold about women women are supposed to be in the kitchen the only cook women are not supposed to talk you know come out to talk and you know women the only place women can do anything is in the kitchen then you know you have you you have you are a homo you are a homophobic person and then you are writing an essay you are telling them how you hate gays in your essay oh my god that is terrible that is big red flag why am i saying this i work with this i work with this ijiroro journal and we called for paper and we get to review some some papers that oh my god the views they hold about some of these controversial issues is 
is nothing to write home about so i'm trying to be prudent but we know you might be homophobic in fact if you're homophobic why come to western world that are not homophobic if you are anti-women why come to develop you know some of these western societies that are pro-women stay back in your country and maybe school there and grow but if you want to come into this country one thing i'm advising is to avoid writing on controversial issues Contro application time application season is not the time to make good arguments for you know some of these controversial issues avoid them avoid them because you don't know who is reviewing your paper and of course people they will promise not to be biased of course they will promise not to be biased but it's human beings after all so try to avoid controversial issues and then redundant areas of research interest so in every field there is this you know there are particular themes that people have been talking about them over and over and over again so it has become redundant so you don't need to keep you know reminding them that this is the area you want to work on that is already a red flag on its own try to find something novel this is a contemporary world so many people are working on so many new and interesting things right so try to key into one of these new areas and new interesting things try to key into one of them and and um you know leverage on that opportunity don't keep repeating for example you're a philosophy student and you're still talking about plato socrates oh my god what even if you are doing history of philosophy there's a way you should talk about plato and socrates you know or i don't know you understand what i'm saying so don't be redundant try to bring up new new things i know they don't just do your best <laughs> anyways that is what i have for today i have talked about five things that could lead to your scholarship rejection your lack of preparations your ill-crafted essays poor letters of recommendation poor grade which in the long run it's not really a problem the only problem is when you don't work hard when you don't show that you can be challenged and then the fifth is your own fitness for a particular program don't forget so that is that so while you prepare your scholarship application this year please and please try to watch out for these five mistakes or so five common mistakes your poor grade is not the coffee that would bury you know you can leverage on it and i've seen people with two two who got scholarships i've never seen people with um is it third class who got scholarship but i don't think it is impossible you just i mean your your what you know is garbage in garbage out what you're giving is what you take out so yes you have poor grades but you can leverage on it and work harder and do some other things that will bring you out and will make you marketable so that is that for today please don't forget to like my videos if you have not already subscribed please do subscribe and share with your friends and acquaintances and i am very grateful for to, for seeing you today in this episode thank you very much and see you next week bye bye